Welcome back. My name is Dr. Carl Baird, and today I'll be taking you through a 30-minute strength training routine for knee pain. This is going to be level two, so be sure before progressing to this one to check out our level one and be sure that you're comfortable with all of those movements because these ones are designed to be built off of those movements there. So before we get started, I just want to do a quick reminder that the goal of this program is to teach you how to limit the impact that goes through your knees to solve weeks, months, years of knee pain. But what this isn't is it's not a specific rehab program for things like patellar tendonitis, meniscus, or arthritis. It's not treating a specific condition, but more importantly, it's teaching us how to limit the impact that goes through our knee through strength training. So with that being said, it's time to get started. The things that you will need is a nice eight inch mini band and a nice medium size weight. If you don't have those things, first I would strongly recommend that you do get a medium sized weight, whether that's a dumbbell or a kettlebell. If we're serious about building strength, it is important to start adding resistance with a little bit of weight. But if you don't have that today, that's fine. Go ahead and just pick up anything that's gonna add a little bit of resistance. It can be a water jug. I've had people use cast iron pans. You can get creative with it, but just anything you can hold that's gonna add a little bit of resistance. And so, with that being said, it's time to get started. We're gonna start with a little bit of a warm up just to get our joints nice and loose. So we're gonna meet here in this hand and knee position, and we're just gonna start with a couple cat cows. So again, cat position. You're gonna press through your hands to arch your back, tuck that pelvis inward, let your head hang. And the cow position is just going to be the opposite. Lift up your head, rock that pelvis back, drop your trunk. Good. So all we're doing here is slow movement back and forth. Just getting our spine nice and warmed up. You can add in movements just wherever you feel tight there's no right or wrong so you can kind of shift to the right you can shift to the left pressing straight up really stretching in between those shoulder blades and good next we're going to move into our lunge position so we're going to stretch out kind of the front side of our hips here. So all we're gonna do is keep our trunk nice and straight. We're gonna go forward over our front toe here. I'm gonna feel a stretch in the back side of that left knee, hold it for a second or two and then back out and then head back in. So you just wanna slowly ease yourself into the position. And what we're going for is a stretch on the front side of this back leg. Again, just nice and slow. On this next one, we're gonna hold it. So now we'll do a little bit of a static stretch. Keep your body in a nice upright position. If you bend too far forward here, you're gonna take tension off of that hip, which is not what we're going for. We want that stretch, we want that tension. And good, we'll back on out of it, and then we're gonna switch sides. So lunge position, the other foot forward, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna drive over our front toe here. And again, this time we're feeling the stretch on the front side of the back leg. And come on back out. Good. All right, keep going. On this last one, we are gonna hold. Remember to keep your trunk upright. You want that stretch on the front side. As we go through a lot of these movements, really pay attention to how things feel. Just as an example, my, what I notice is I'm a lot tighter on this left side than I was on the right side. It's not good or bad but you just want to listen to what your body's telling you. And 
and come on out. Good. All right, we're gonna go to a standing position. We're gonna do another just hip mobilization. With this one, we're gonna have a wide stance with our toes pointed out at about 45 degrees. From there, all we're gonna do is bend one knee while we straighten the other. And again, we're just stretching out those hips. You're gonna come back to the middle and bend the other way. Good. Only thing to really pay attention to here is that that movement, not bending over the knee here, but it's hips back and then bend the knee. And what you should be feeling, again, a stretch on the inside of your groin muscle. If you sink lower into that movement, you can get a stretch on the back side of your hips there. Good. And we're just slowly moving back and forth, just warming up our hips. A lot of our knee movement is controlled by the hips, so it's important that they have both strength and mobility to make sure we're not loading our knees too much. Good. All right. Last one. We're just going to do 10 air squats, just a way to get our heart rate up before we get started. So again, find your squat stance and we'll count you down. Three, two, one. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And again, don't need to rush it. Should be feeling a little stretch at the bottom if you want. Nine. And last one here. So again, just to get our heart rate up a little bit, if you want to spend a little time at the bottom here, really stretch out those hips, rocking back and forth. And good. Shake it out. All right. So we're going to head back onto our mat and we're going to start with our mini band. We're going to put this over our feet and pull it up to our knees. If you have hairy legs like I do, that's kind of the worst part. It really hurts. <laughs> okay, let's go. So first exercise is what called a butterfly bridge. So we're going to do that bridge that we practiced in level one, but this time when you come up, so again, pressing those hips up, you're going to hold it up and do 10 butterflies, which is just going to be bringing those knees out. One, two, three, four, five. Keep pressing through those feet. Keep those hips up. Nine, 10. Once you've hit 10, we're going to drop those hips. Give yourself a little bit of time to relax and then press up again. Do another 10. The key here is really to press through those feet, not let your hips drop down like that. A lot of times when people are first learning this movement, that's the tendency. So really press through, make sure that your hips are up. You got full tension in not only your glute max, but these butterflies you're going to feel on the outside of the hips. Good. And back down. Do one more and press up again. Tension in the glutes, 10 butterflies. So like I mentioned before, the knee movement is primarily controlled by our hips. And if we don't have adequate strength or tension in the hips, we're going to feel it down at the knees, which is why this is something we really focus on. Good. And done. Okay. We're going to move to a standing position. The rest of our movements, they're going to be standing, but we're going to keep the band on for this one. So don't take the band off quite yet. We're going to stand on up. Feet hip width apart. So now when we stand up with the band, what you're going to notice is the band kind of pulls your knees inward like that. We want to counter that. Make sure that we're really pressing our knees out. We're going to start hip width apart. And then all we're going to do is go wide, hip width, wide, hip width, wide, hip width. Good. You want to avoid stepping in 
too narrow, like this, that takes all the tension off of the band. We want to create tension with the band as we walk back and forth. Again, this is another one for the outside of our hips here. The glute med, super important to build strength with our glute med. Good. Keep going. Should really start to feel a burn after those butterflies outside of those hips. Press those knees out. Don't let the band pull you in. Good. Three, two, and one last one. Good. All right. We'll take the band off for now. And we're gonna move in to our single leg balance and single leg strength exercise. This exercise is called the running man. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start on our right leg, bringing our left leg up to 90 degrees. And we're gonna have our right arm up at 90 degrees. So it's like we're running in place. That's why it's called the running man. Make sure your stance leg is not locked out. There's a slight bend in that knee. And then from there, all you're gonna do is run in place. So you're gonna bring your knee back, bring your elbow back as you bring your other arm up. Good. And then come back to that starting position. So it's just like you're running in place. If you're having a hard time with balance, Maybe you just start with a running man hold without the movement. So just try to hold it in this position here. And again, if you fall out, it's totally fine. Just kind of put the foot down, reset, and follow along with us. Good. What you should start to notice is again, more burning on the outside of your stance leg. So more of that glute med work for knee pain you really, really want to build strength in that glute med. And you want to be able to support yourself when you stand on one foot, which is why I really like this running man exercise. Good. We're going to do one more. Back to the start. Good. And we're going to switch. So left knee again, slight bend in the left knee, right knee up to 90, left hand up to 90 and go coordination also one of the hardest things on this one so again slow and controlled take your time on this one it's more about how long you can balance on your stance leg versus kind of how fast you can do these movements i'd rather have you be able to balance for a longer period of time than go so fast that you're just falling out of the movement and we're not getting that burn on the outside of the hip. Nice work, keep going. Again, if you fall out of it, just reset. Try to get back into it. If it's easier, just do a little hold. You can hold it right here. You're still gonna get that burn on the outside of the hip. We got three, two, and one. Nice work. Okay, now we're gonna be using our kettlebell. So with whatever weight you have, whether it's a water jug, kettlebell, dumbbell you can also use, we're gonna lift it up. And this one is gonna be a suitcase carry. So when we're holding a weight at one side, the one thing we really, really wanna keep in mind is we wanna be the ones developing tension. So we don't want the weight to be pulling us this way. We don't wanna be using our counterbalance to hold it this way. So to do that, we do a slight squeeze on the weight, creates tension up the arm, roll the shoulders back. And then from there, all we're gonna do is march in place. Again, with just kinda of like a quick one second hold here at the top. I love these carries, one for balance, for coordination, and 
functional core strength. So things that you actually use, it's not a direct core strengthener like maybe a sit up or a plank, but this is a more functional core, which means it's better for day to day activities, protecting your knees, protecting your back. Good. All right, we're gonna switch to the other hand. Same thing, 50% squeeze on the weight, roll those shoulders back, and march. Nice work. All right. Again, another balance challenge. If balance is your issue, this is another more functional way to train balance. Maybe a little easier than the uh, running man. <laughs> Good. Keep going. You can feel your ankles start to wobble. It means this is a good exercise. This is what your body wants. Three, two, and one. Nice work. Okay, now we're gonna get into our movement pattern. So we're gonna keep with the weight and we're gonna do weighted hip hinge. So again, all we're gonna do is have the weight pull us straight down as we reach our hips back, just until we feel tension in the hamstrings and then stand back up. Nice work, I'll start the timer. All right, good. So again, weight pulls you straight down as you send those hips back. This hip hinge movement, super important in coordinating good movement to take pressure off of your knees and back. The weighted hip hinge, really good at building strength in the hamstring and glutes. It's also one of the best hamstring lengtheners too. So if you've got tight hamstrings, you can hold it here at the bottom a little bit and get a little bit of an extra stretch, but it's that eccentric contraction of the hamstrings that actually probably the most beneficial Hamstring stretch, way better than static stretching. Don't even get me started on static stretching. Unless you got an hour or so. <laughs> All right. Last one here. We're gonna stand on up. Good. Set our weight down. And we're gonna move into a tempo squat. So all tempo means is we're gonna slow the squat down. We're still in the first half of our exercise series. We're at level two which means it is about more ingraining the pattern. We really wanna make sure that we have this squat patterning down and one way to do that and make sure we do is to slow it down. So I'll kind of count you into it. It's gonna be three seconds down, a two second hold at the bottom and one second count coming on up. So grab the timer, go ahead. You're gonna send the hips back, drop those hips. Two, one, one, two at the bottom and stand on up good go again three two one one two stand up three two one one two stand on up good so with the squat Remember, you can play around with your squat stance. It's not always toes pointed forward, hip width apart. Everybody's hip anatomy is a little different, so finding the right squat stance is gonna be important for you. You're looking for what's most comfortable and what helps you get down a little bit lower. Two, one. All right, here we got last one. Three, two, one, one, two, and stand on up. Nice work. Now we're getting into our lunge patterning. So for knee pain, probably one of the most beneficial movements is gonna be this lunging. We're gonna start with split squats. It's a little bit easier, easier version of the lunge because 
you'll have two points of contact. So it won't be a balance issue here. What we're gonna do is get into our split stance. And all you're gonna do, you're gonna drop this back knee, press up off the front, good, and stand on back up. Nice work, dropping the back knee. Make sure you're just pressing up off that front knee. Good. And again, you can play around with the stance. I was a little bit too wide on that one for my liking, so it's okay. If you don't like the stance or it's uncomfortable, just try to just switch it up, find something that's a little more comfortable for you. Good. All right. You're gonna do a minute straight. If you need a break, it's okay to take a break. But we should start to feel a burn. Fr front leg. Good. Dropping that back knee. Got one more, you got it. And switch. All right. I'll turn around and we'll do same thing on the opposite leg. So, drop that back knee, press up off the front. Good. So again, I always like slow and controlled. What you don't want to have happen is you get going so fast that you're wobbling, even, <laughs> even right there, I lost my balance. A perfect example of why it's better to go slow and controlled. Again, pay attention to what you're feeling. I ruptured this Achilles tendon playing basketball a long time ago and there's always been a little bit of an imbalance so working on this left side, I definitely feel it a lot more than I did on that right. It's definitely a lot more difficult. Which is why these kind of single leg exercises are so important. Last one here. Press up off that front leg. Woo! And done. All right, so that was round one. Not quite done yet, we got another round. Didn't mean to preemptively get you excited, but we'll take a little break, grab some water, and catch our breath. Nice work. We're gonna go ahead and put our bands on around our leg, we're halfway done. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Start on our backs. And get into our bridge position. Press those knees up, good. And we're doing 10 butterflies. A Little bit harder around two. <laughs> Good, keep those hips up, really press through those feet. And after 10, bring it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And back down, nice work. Got time for one more. So remember, you don't want these hips to drop. You want to really press through the feet to keep them up. And you want full tension in the glutes and full tension in our glute meds. Both super important in controlling our knee movement. Nice work. All right, so we're going to keep that band on. We're going to come to a standing position. And we're going to start hip width apart. These are those monster walks. Oh boy, pulling on the hairs. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, we're going to start hip width, take a wide step and back. So again, that band, pulling your knees inward. You want to make sure you're pressing those knees out the whole time. Good. Nice work. So again, strengthening these glutes on the outside. Nice. 
Nice work. Remember not to get too narrow with the feet. If you come too narrow, you lose that tension in the band. We want to keep tension throughout this movement. Nice work. Again, keep a slight bend in the knees. You don't want straight legs like this. If you did play basketball, you know, defensive slide. <laughs> nice work. All right. We can go ahead and take this band off. We're done with our band. But we're back to our running man. So what we're going to do, stand on that right foot, slight bend, left knee up, and right hand is up. So again, depending on your balance, you can really just try to hold it right here. Again, if you kind of fall out, it's okay to get right back into it and really try to hold it as long as you can. The more you do it, the better you'll get. I know these balance ones are by far the most frustrating for a lot of people because balance is super frustrating. <laughs> Seems like it's one of those things that can be easy, but it's not for everybody, so it's okay. You just gotta stay, stay positive. But the balance is good, remember, the movement is bringing that elbow and knee back, other knee up. You're just running in place. Slow and control, not how fast you can go. You want to control this whole movement. Nice work. Really start to feel that burn on the outside of your stance leg. Good. Okay. Let's switch it up. Left foot. Slight bend in that left leg. Right foot up. Left arm up. And go. Again, either a static hold or slowly start to do some of these movements here. Ooh. Lost my balance there. Good. Nice work, slow and controlled. one here nice work perfect all right next we're going back to our carry so let's grab our weight and again we create the tension the weight doesn't pull us around we create the tension slight squeeze roll those shoulders back and march in place nice work again just pay attention one of the things that sometimes I notice with this exercise is that people will say, well, one leg's a lot harder to balance on than the other. When they stand on their left leg, it's like big shift. Other leg, it's easy. So again, just paying attention to areas that we gotta work on. It's not good or bad, but the more we know about our body, the more we can take care of it. If this is tough for you, probably means it's a good exercise. We gotta be doing this one more often. <laughs> good. Okay, we're gonna switch to the other side. Nice. Honestly, that's a pretty common thing in the strength training world is people have a tendency to do what they're good at, right? But at least some of the time, we should also focus on the things we're bad at those are the things that probably need the most work and are going to be the most beneficial for us. So if this is tough for you, the running man is tough for you, keep with it. The only way to get stronger is to do hard things. Getting strong was easy. Everybody would do it. But here you are working out with me. Nice work. There's a lot more fun things you could be doing. I know that. All right. And good. Okay, getting into our 
weighted hip hinge. So weight right in front, holding with both hands. And send those hips back as the weight drops straight down, just till you feel tension in the hamstrings and back up. So again, the other thing you really wanna pay attention to is how low you go. I could go lower, but that's when I start rounding my spine, which is not what we want. We're gonna stop the minute we feel tension in those hamstrings. We keep that nice and straight spine. Again, we want to take pressure off of our joints. Not do things that are gonna aggravate it. So again, that's what I always say with all this, make sure it's slow and controlled so the form is good. Because if you exercise with bad form, it can make your pain worse. We want it to be part of the solution, not the problem. <laughs> All right, nice work, okay. Back to our tempo squats, almost there. So, again, three seconds down, two second hold, one second back up, I'll count you in. Here we go, three, two, one, one, two, back up. 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 That three seconds is longer than you think, huh? <laughs> when I have people do this on their own count, their three seconds seems to be a lot quicker than <laughs> it actually is. Good. All right, three, two, one, one, two, and up. Three, two, one, one, two, back up. We'll do one more. Three, two, one. Let's hold it for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and back up. Nice work. <laughs> okay, now all we got left is those split squats, starting to develop a sweat, starting to feel pretty good. Again, it's easy to get a good workout. You don't need a whole bunch of equipment or heavy machines. So let's go ahead, start left leg in front. All we're gonna do, drop that back knee and press up. Nice. Good. So again, slow and controlled on these. We want you to keep good balance throughout the workout so not going so fast that you start to wobble all over the place if you need to take a break shake out your legs go for it but really try to stay if you can really push yourself this is the last thing we got so just a minute left good Keep going. Ooh. Second round's a little tougher. We got 10 more seconds on this side. Two and one, good. All right, we're gonna switch sides. Last minute here. You got it. Nice work. Push yourself. Really try to move this whole time. Whew. That's what's great about getting stronger. It's not physically stronger, mentally stronger. You're strong enough to do this. It's that voice in your head that's trying to talk you out of it. Keep going, halfway there. Again, if you need to slow it down, slow it down. But try not to fall out. Nice work. Almost there, 15 seconds left. <sighs> Starting to breathe hard, 10 seconds. <sighs> You're done after this. Last one, three, two, one. Nice work. All right. 
So go ahead, take some time to cool down, but you've completed level two of our knee pain workouts. So go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Again, my name is Dr. Carl Baird. This is Solving Pain with Strength. Go ahead and leave some comments in below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.